There are 1.4 million Canadians enrolled in university studies. 70% of a Canadian corporate worker's day is spent sedentary at a desk. An estimated 57.3 million hours are spent on social media in Canada per day. All of these numbers are even larger within the United States. These groups of people all have something in common to them. Something that can turn their days into great discomforts, disability, and pain. The bad news is that this condition is is one of the most prevalent in North America. But the good news is that it's also very simple to treat given a little bit of knowledge and some TLC. And that's what we're gonna be going through today. Spending long hours working or studying at a desk is something that probably nobody actually wants to do. However, whether for money or grades, it's something that most of us find ourselves pushing through regardless. This can be even less appealing and downright difficult to do when we start developing pains and symptoms as a result of doing it. Prolonged desk work, or more specifically the classic slouched posture associated with it, can lead to a constellation of symptoms which together may form a syndrome. Now, the word syndrome may sound kind of scary or concerning, but never fear, in medical jargon, syndrome just means a bunch of symptoms that present together. For example, the common cold may be considered a syndrome because it presents with the symptoms of a runny nose, a sore throat, and a cough. Now, let's take a look at the classic slouched posture that many students and corporate workers take when working away at their desk. This position will inevitably lead to discomforts and pain. The lower and middle trapezius fibers, as well as the front neck muscles, become deconditioned and weak. The upper traps, chest, and posterior neck structures become very stiff and tight, and the resultant tightness of these neck structures can lead to painful headaches or even migraines. Also possible is the screen exposure causing migraines, they're still kind of poorly understood. The combination of these symptoms leads to a resulting diagnosis of upper cross syndrome. This particular condition is so common that it's actually anecdotally nicknamed as student syndrome or corporate syndrome. So now that we know what it is, what do we do about it? Understanding the biomechanics behind upper cross syndrome makes it easy to identify which muscles need to be relaxed and which muscles need to be strengthened or tightened. From a symptoms-based perspective, massage therapy or myofascial release technique will really help to reduce the pains and stiffnesses experienced. Combine this with spinal manipulative therapy of the upper back or the thoracic spine and the neck or the cervical spine, and we can see an increase in joint range of motion and function. Usually these two passive interventions are enough to have the patient feeling great relief immediately, but the effects will only be temporary. Unless you want to be constantly visiting a paramedical provider, you're going to need to be addressing the root cause as well as make some modifications to your ergonomic setup and movement behaviors. As usual, you'll have to approach the condition from a causative perspective. Look to modifying your workstation. If you work primarily from a laptop, take note of this. Laptops are useful because they let us work virtually anywhere with a Wi-Fi connection, but they're not great from an ergonomics perspective. Ensuring that your computer screen or textbook is propped up to eye level is usually sufficient in making sure that you do not return to that slouch posture. That in itself will greatly benefit you when you're trying to push away the symptoms of upper cross. However, if you use a laptop but work primarily in one location, you may need to invest in a little bit of additional tech. Consider investing in a wireless mouse and keyboard and prop your laptop up to eye level. I swear I would do this myself, except I can't quite afford an Apple keyboard yet. Total side note, you can help with that by subscribing. If I gain 30 subscribers from this video alone, I promise I will go purchase a wireless keyboard for myself because clearly you all care about my health and I appreciate that. Okay, back to it, shameless plug. While you are sitting at your chair, a very useful exercise to do that you can do while seated is known as Brugger's position. The idea behind this exercise is to completely convert from that forward-leaning posture to the opposite. Chest forward, shoulder blades back, head back, palms up. This position works to stretch the things that need to be stretched and strengthen the things that need to be strengthened. Speaking of which structures need to be targeted in what ways, the strengthening of the middle and lower trapezius fibers will help to pull the shoulder blades back and take tension off of the neck and upper traps. There are two very simple exercises that you can do with some light weights to help facilitate this. I'll include them in the video now, because yeah, I probably should. As well, while you are working at your desk, remember to be consistently changing up how you are seated. Contrary to popular belief, there is no such thing as perfect posture. Movement is the important thing when we are considering postural related issues. You could be seated in the most perfect of perfect postures, but given enough time, you're gonna start developing symptoms as a result of being in that position. That's why it's important to constantly be changing up. Sick as a dog now. Okay. 
Okay. Personally, every 25 minutes or so, I get up to move around, make a tea, use the bathroom, whatever I have to do for about five minutes. And the interesting thing is that this particular time frame of 25 minutes work five minutes break is actually associated with higher levels of productivity in your day. This strategy is known as the Pomodoro Technique, and I've already made a video about it, which you can watch up there. In summary, upper cross syndrome is one of the most prevalent conditions in the modern desk jockey world. One of the best stretches that you can do in the same position for which you are working for upper cross syndrome is Brueger's exercise, and it works by stretching the structures that need to be stretched and strengthening the structures that need to be strengthened. A combination of ergonomic, symptom-based, causative or biomechanical based approaches will help to ensure that you can keep working or studying away free from pain. That's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. If this video helped either you or someone you know, please consider sharing and subscribing down below. It will help me to afford that wireless keyboard. You can click here for the previous video or you can click here for the next one. Have yourselves great days.